All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining for this last uh, last day of um, of uh, Games Made in Europe masterclasses and uh, second to last. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Martin. Good morning to you too, and good morning to everybody. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, thank, thanks everyone for uh, for uh, being there for this uh, last. Uh, Second to last uh, masterclass of games made in Europe. Uh, today we're welcoming uh, Nick for uh, from Theory Craft Marketing, um, talking about uh, how uh, how you can sh do a great marketing plan to attract investors. Um, for people who haven't been to previous uh, to previous sessions, um, you can use the little Q and A uh, tool from Zoom to uh, ask your question. Uh, Nick will answer some of them uh, as they go. And then we'll have a dedicated Q and A session at the very end uh, to answer all the ones that are have been left behind. Um, so yeah, um, without further ado, uh, Nick, uh, floor is yours. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and thanks everyone for, for for jumping on this. It's um, yeah, it's 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 good good to be here and good to chat about about uh, marketing and different tactics and what you can do to um, yeah to to attract attract investors. And it's not necessarily just for that purpose to 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 attract investors. That you might come away with this, you know, with just some tools to use or some different tactics to use for, for yourself and if you're you know wanting to to take that on yourself as well. So um don't don't worry if you're not particularly interested in, in that in, in attracting investors in particular. There's always something that I don't think you can have. Um, so yeah, I've just in, included some some contact details here just in case you wanted to get in touch afterwards um as well. So I've I've um I head up and, and, and started Theory Craft Marketing about six and a half, seven years ago. Um, and we essentially started as just, you know, a, a, an ad advertising agency that, that specialized in sort of indie studios and, and, and releasing and helping, helping re to release, um, you know, indie games through digital marketing. Um, so I'll start off with a small introduction to the company. Um, and once that's, once that admin is out of the way, then I'll get get started into the into the the real sort of you know the real the real nitty gritty. Um, so essentially, as I said, we work with with various studios, we work with developers and publishers as well, and also investment companies directly um, as an extension to their marketing teams. So we will work with um, people like Global Top Round or Triple Dragon, for example. We, we have a good relationship with them and they forward us to their portfolio, for example, to be able to take care of all their marketing needs, um, as well as, you know, with publishers and developers as well. Um, we kind of get get absorbed into that as their marketing team. We have a creative studio in-house, so we um, create and edit, add assets, trailers, social content and things like that. And as an agency, obviously, we have a, a really good, long-standing partnership with sort of gaming publications um, and ad networks like Future, who run Games Radar, PC Gamer, Coinzilla, um, Ziff Davis International as well, who, who are in charge of IGN Media Buying. And we're kind of spread out through 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 the through the world really. So we have a global reach of, of our campaigns. Um, in terms of you know our locations where um so i'm over in, in in the london um in the london office but we've got um we've got locations over in hamburg germany um Mumbai. we've actually moved to bangalore now um but yeah over in india and then a satellite office in singapore as well so we cover a lot of the um the regions around the world uh, and then just a few few highlights in terms of um in terms of some clients of ours but we you know we've we work with small to mid to, to larger companies. We don't really have any any minimum spends or minimum requirements for, for anyone we work with. We just love, you know, working with, with studios that to help, you know, help their games you know, get out to the right people. Uh, then just a few a few uh, creative examples of, of our team that, that have worked on before. Um, just just briefly going over that, some really cool projects that we've been lucky enough to to work on um and yeah just briefly now sort of go over 
briefly the, the, the importance of a marketing plan. Um, obviously, you're aware that that it is it's it's needed, um, and and why in this case that it would be important for in terms of in terms of you know raising money and, and approaching investors um, with with this. Um, it obviously demonstrates your your business strategy. So it shows your potential investors like not only you can create a, a great game, but you can also get it in front of the right people. Um, because you can, you know, you can create the best game there is. But if if no one knows about it, if no one if no one sees it, then then um, you know why it, it's 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 not going to do well. Like I saw the the Lord of the Rings Gollum game, for example, I saw yesterday on a comment on on a post on a comment that that it it it, it releases today or something, and and the comments were just full of oh, I didn't even know this was. This was releasing. I didn't, you know, is this a shadow release? And there, there wasn't too much talk about it in terms of the actual release. So there's a lot that can be gained through marketing, but there's a lot also that can be lost in terms of momentum and things like that. Um, and also shows investors that you have thought about potential return on investment and you've thought about how you're going to make your money back basically through 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 advertising. So it's it's obviously quite important in that case. Um it also helps you identify the risks and challenges, so shows you a realistic view of the market and how um, you can navigate this within, you know, for, for your game. Um, and then it also opens up yourself to, to learn a lot more about, about the market and, and, and sort of any challenges that, that you could face. And then uh, lastly on this, you'll, you'll be able to measure your progress, so you get kind of get black and white down down on paper exactly what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it and then sort of how you're going to measure it and, and show exactly what's uh, what's the plan basically what the game plan is um so just a little brief overview we're going to go through sort of some examples some tools that you can use um for various different um things to to create your plans um different advertising channels so we'll go through a bit of pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses of, of some different ad channels in our experience and then we'll finish with some you know conclusion next steps and sort of um you know a bit of a summary yeah. um so yeah let's 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 get started so obviously first of all you want to understand your game and, and, and your audience so to do that you need to discover your usbs and obviously um you know this is a feature or characteristic that's going to set your whole game apart from others. Um, so obviously the, the the key, you know, the 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 key point of having a USB is to get differentiation in the market. So it sets you apart from the competition, sets you apart from that crowded market. And it's also, you know, it's important to have similar games that you drive, you, you get inspiration from and you get you get sort of an audience from. But you obviously want to want to get enough difference from them to entice new players and to to sort of get get that new players on board, um, as well as um, it gives you a, a target audience essentially. If you know what your USBs are, um, it helps you define your audience segments. Um, so when you know what your best and most unique attributes are within your game, um, then you can start thinking about your audience and how what they look like and where you can find them, which is what we'll, we'll go into uh, later as well. Um, then obviously it helps you as, 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 you know, as is obvious, helps you with your marketing. So once you obviously know who the right people are to speak to, then you know, you will know how to speak to them and what messaging to put across. Um, so then you can speak to the right people in the right places and tell them exactly the right things that they want to know. And they also might help with the design decisions. So it could help make changes to a specific element in the game or double down on a specific USB in, in, in your game as well, in your messaging and your marketing that you want to highlight and that you want to show that, that, that you're really doubling down on this. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's understanding your, your video games or, or your USB is, is crucial for creating a, you know, a standout game that appeals to your target audience. So um, it's really worth, obviously, think, sitting down and thinking about that. Um, moving on to, to competitor research, um, it's you know it's just so important to look at what competitors are doing, or not even competitors, really, just peers in in the industry and, and people that, that see what's working well and not so well and things like that. And there's a lot of different tools 
and 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 techniques you can use, which is what I'm I'm going to go through a, a few of them. Um, and yeah, don't be afraid to take certain aspects of what other people are doing and and adapt them to your own your own marketing plan and your own way of communicating, uh, but with your own twist. Um, so to get into some detail, to be able to to start thinking about and start crafting your media plan and your, your marketing plan. You want to do some, some social media listening so you can use tools like Hootsuite Insights or Brandwatch, for example, that, that monitor specific keywords. Um, so what competitors, fans or, or other company or other, other studios fans are saying about them online. Um, so this can help understand, help you understand what people are like, what people are happy about. Um, what they're not so happy about when it comes to, you know, the game, the marketing, the communication, because at the end of the day, you know, if people are kicking off online. A large reason of that could be to do with marketing. It could be to do with the messaging or something. That, so it's it's important to know, to look at other other games and see what people are saying about them. Um, then looking at competitor analysis tools. So there's like SEM Rush, Similar Web, for example. Um, you can monitor other websites, other studios' websites or landing pages, for example, plug that into these tools. And this will give you an idea of like keywords that they're using. Um, so even if you put in your own one just to test it out um, today or whatever, or, or, and then look at sort of other studios as well, um, you can look at what keywords they're using and then maybe use similar keywords or, or, or variations of them. And then obviously use them in your YouTube or search or Twitter keyword targeting, for example. Um, so this is a good way of getting getting some keywords from from your competitors as well. Um, you can also look at uh, email marketing, um, not as commonly done as 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 you would have thought in this sense. Um, to be able to get you know analysis from from email marketing is 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 quite valuable in terms of. You know, maybe even just signing up to a competitor's email um, list to see what content they're pushing out, to see how often um, that can be really useful as well. So just diving in as a as a as a fan, basically, and, and analyzing it through your through a different lens. <clears throat> um, as well, looking at public relations monitoring. So there are tools um, that give you a deeper understanding of of what what other companies are doing well, for example. And what can they improve on? So, as I say, like something like Meltwater or Google News, even um, to monitor specific news stories, um, PR efforts, um, uncover maybe some strategies and publications that they're using, and see how well they did on on socials. Um, to maybe get a bit of a tactic in terms of publications to use, messaging to use, for example, and and things they're saying, and even the the way that that's being reacted to by, by the audience. Um, these are some tools that we can use to, to really uncover some, some strategy to be able to then put us forward in a good stead for, for creating our own strategy. Um, then um, lastly on, on this on this section, um, you know, you can use some some great some great free tools, even like Google Trends, that's you know pretty pretty simple tool but but gives you a bit of insight or even something like BuzzSumo. Um, to, to, to analyze content. Um, so looking at, I, you know, identifying popular topics, keywords, or anything like that in, in specific industry or even a specific genre and seeing how well that's doing. So Google Trends, for example, you'll need maybe a list of keywords that you can plug into Google Trends and see how, how much that's trending. If it's got an upward trajectory, then maybe put some, create some content around it post some more stuff about that specific genre and, and just see what's what's trending at the moment because you might have an idea of what's trending in your in your bubble maybe which might be true but it's good to sort of get that using these tools as well to uncover maybe some new um, avenues <clears throat> um so then bringing us on to audience targeting research um so now you kind of have a little bit of a better idea into your to your target audience, but you need to know kind of what is available and, and, and how you can target them online and how you're going to show that you're going to reach these people to potential investors. Um, you know, how you how, how many of them are even out there in, in the world to target? How, what, what's the scale? So, yeah, so looking again, some different tools and different techniques. 
um, winter look beyond the marketing plan and 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 start off essentially after a bit of research, competitive research and stuff, look at how we can find and, and, and segment different audience groups to be able to, you know, send out different messaging to different audience groups and things like that. It's important to segment these, these audiences. So looking at uh, analytics tools, obviously Google Analytics is, is the main one. Adobe as well have a, have a, have a suite of tools for this. Um, these can obviously collect data from your own landing page. So if you've got a landing page and you've got some data on it already, you can even use these tools to get a good insight in terms of with GA, for example, um, what else these other people, people are browsing, what else they're interested in, um, what's their behavior on your site, what content are they, are they looking at more um, or engaging with more, um, if there's specific buttons on your page or, or using something like Hotjar to analyze what 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 a heat map looks like on your website to see what, what people are interested in um this helps you inform yeah what your messaging could be what you're focusing on as well um then looking at social media insights so as well looking at your own first party data in terms of facebook insights twitter analytics are really good ways of looking at what kind of demographics or other interests or other content that, that people also engage with and helps you sort of segment these people into different different groups. And as well, another another option is, is running a survey or a poll. It, it's straight to the point, straight to the to, to 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 getting and collecting your own data in that way. So you can carry out your own research, free things like SurveyMonkey or Google Forms to get really good insight into your audience and to know exactly what they're, you know, what they're interested in and what that other stuff that they, they, they like, um, or even offer incentives on a completion of a form. So building up an email list from this to be able to then use on, on advertising as well. Um, looking at, at as well at, at keyword research. Um, so Google Keyword Planner is another tool. Um, by the way, I'll I'll be listing at the end um, a list of all the tools that that I I mentioned in the um, in this presentation. Um, so there's a slide at the end that, that lists all the tools out and and, and tells you what they do. So um, I'm aware that I'm kind of throwing a lot of different tools and, and, and things at you. So um, yeah, the um, the Google Keyword Planner. For example, helps you. You can even plug in a website. You can plug in some some of your key, you know, keywords and, and genres, and it will spit out specific search terms and specific locations that other people are also searching. So it gives you not only good search terms to target on advertising, but also good other, you know, other genres, other interests that other people are, are, are typing as well that are related to your to your game. Um, so that's obviously helps you identify your audience segments, helps you uncover new audience segments as well. Um, so once you once you have got a good idea into your audience, got some good keywords, got some got some good segments that you've been, that you that you found. It, it, for example, similar games, you've uncovered some more similar games, specific genres or, or a wider audience in that sense. You can actually, as a, a technique that we do as well, is, is go on Facebook audience targeting. So go up um, into a Facebook campaign um, as if you're setting up a new campaign. Um, then just plug in specific, um, specific audience segments. So I think this one, for example, is... And MMO, oh, it's quite small for, for me to read, but um, yeah, so for example, I think this one's MMO, so you type that in, or PVP, type that into, or a detailed targeting into, into Facebook, and then on the right, you can see, um, you can see here, it says specific or broad, and it gives you a kind of estimated audience size for that. Um, so you can, you can know kind of what the population is like, it's not an exact size, but it, it gives you an idea of the population size on Facebook in terms of, in this case, um, you know, MMO or PVP. Um, you can see the audience size in a specific country and then kind of segment out audiences in that way. If it's big enough, that can be a segment in its own right. Or if you need to add more layers to that audience, um, you can sort of start building these segments out. <clears throat> And um, then lastly, on, on audience, um, you know, research, 
there are external tools and external sources that are that are that are good and that that can be used to to get a bit more of a baseline sort of idea in terms of the market itself. Um, so you know stuff like game analytics, good product stacks, uh, things called game intel where you have like benchmarks, top charts, market intelligence, and a game explorer function. And also something like Steam Data Street that we're partnered up with that has a lot of market data on Steam specifically that gives you competitive research, tag research, all sorts of all sorts of things that can give you a good idea into, into your audience or potential audience. Um, so yeah, so now you've now you've got your audience. Um, where do you basically where do you start in defining your media plan? Um, when you're going forward. You know, I'm. We're well aware that that your main focus is building a great game and 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 building a great great product. So, marketing isn't necessarily at your the forefront of your mind. Um, but you know, so it's difficult to know exactly where to start. Um, obviously, that's that's where where we come in as well. That's what we. That's why we exist to help to help um, you know studios create marketing plans, execute marketing plan, uh, execute marketing plans and and scale their game. Um, but we're going to just go in a bit how to define your media plan and 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 different sort of channels and things that 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 are involved. So I've included here um I'm not going to click through to these yeah um I'm going to see if we've got some time at the end um because i'm aware i don't want to go too much over the time but we and obviously we're going to send this out afterwards as well um so these are clickable elements that have an example of a template media plan that we've that we've created for you we've got a template of a pitch deck if it's useful it's just a really rough guide in terms of what we've seen before included in a pitch deck to investors for example this has got a few template things in it that maybe you can help apply to, to your own or and we've also got an audience segmentation document that we have um that just outlines basically the audience segments and how you're going to reach them and, and exactly in which channel so um that's just for you to take away and to have a look at obviously separate we probably will go into the media plan later on and then if we've got time i'll go into the into the audience segmentation document but yeah that's just there in case um you want to look at it later on um so yeah looking at paid media channels um we have our audience segments um now through these various tools and techniques um so now we obviously want to run ads we want to run we want to reach these audiences um so we need to be aware of what channels are out there and their strengths and weaknesses and using our experience to sort of you know helps you define that media plan because at the end of the day a media plan essentially is where you're going to buy media and where you're going to reach these audiences so the way that this is is um the way that this is is organized is that we've got a slide that goes into a bit of detail in terms of some facts and figures which i won't i won't go into detail in they're there for you to for you guys to look at and they're you know relatively straightforward kind of facts and figures based on um based on data online um so i won't go into too much into to here but what i will do on each channel is focus on the the pros and cons specifically um so um yeah i will for the interest of time um i will briefly i'll skip over these these facts and figures um and mostly focus on the pros and cons um so yeah looking at for example like 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 twitter um we see that this is a massive you know massive a uh, channel to, to tap into in terms of the, the clients that we have. Um, there are obviously pros and cons to it. So there are there's there's a lot of flexible targeting. So when we say keyword research before, we can really put this to use in Twitter. Um, so you can have keyword targeting. You can target specific follower lookalikes or conversation topics, for example, like for example on the on the platform and join in on that conversation. Um, so that's a really good aspect of Twitter. As well, you can buy media on cost per click basis, cost per engagement basis, which which really helps with social proofing and 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 um, engagement there. And as well, you can you can have a, a really detailed uh, insight into into your analytics and your audience behavior. So, as I said before, you could dig in really deep with analytics to see um, 
you know, what other interests your audience are, are, are looking at and, and get a good insight into them. Something that we that we that we see with um, Twitter in, in terms of a, a negative is is a relatively limited amount compared to other ad channels in terms of like placements and creative types, um, as well as a, a limited audience size on on desktop. Um, so it it can be a good awareness tactic to use for Twitter, but when you're looking at like direct marketing through through desktop devices through like add to wish list campaigns or, or even install purchase campaigns. Um, when you exclude mobile and just want to go through desktop, there's really not much scale at all. So maybe an awareness campaign would could include this, but then when you go onto that, you know, wish list generation or, or, or installs, then um, look kind of at a more desktop focused, um, you know, channel there, but then still run maybe some engagement campaigns to, to build up a, a community on Twitter. Um, as well as maybe some some ad fatigue. Lastly, as well, this is probably something that's quite common amongst a lot of the channels. Is um, you know, it's an established ad platform. There could be some ad fatigue in terms of people are getting a bit bored and sick of seeing ads on the channel, um, or a little bit immune to it, for example. So there's ways of 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 changing creatives up to to engage people. It's just something to to keep in mind. Um, then looking at, at Meta, so Facebook and Instagram, for example, obviously a big a big gaming platform as well. Um, for for game, a big platform for, for gamers, um, running ads on Meta is obviously we see you know eighty percent of the time included in a media plan. Um, so it's worth going into some pros and cons here. Um, so obviously it's the widest audience reach amongst the widest, for example, with over three billion people. Um, so it's pretty comprehensive to, to understand your audience and target them as well. Um, so we'd say it's normally it's normally pretty included in, in a marketing plan or a media plan. Um, it's got very precise targeting capabilities. So, you know, with that many users comes a lot of user data. Um, so you can create custom audiences from a pixel. Um, and it's one of the best quality sort of pixels and audience data you can, you can get. Um, so that's really important for, for capturing audiences. And then some creative flexibility. So wide range of creative formats, uh, full screen ad creative, so maximal audience attention, as well as carousel, video, banners, all sorts. Um, again, ad fatigue, users might have grown a bit numb to, to ads um, and some placements are obviously you know, more hidden than others. Um, sometimes CPM costs can be a little bit higher than, than other channels. Um, if your audience size is too small, if your targeting is not is not wide enough, it can drive CPM up because the thousand people reached. Um, as well as the ad approval process, specifically in gaming as well, if there's some fight scenes or anything anything pushing the line, um, they're, they're, they've got an automated ad approval technology that can be quite strict, um, and you can repeatedly face denial of ads and maybe even ad account uh just to say get your ad account disabled if you get your ads denied a few, uh, few too many times so yeah that can limit exposure obviously as uh, as well as progress um so now we look at go on to reddit um obviously a popular platform for gamers um with over 1.7 million subreddits dedicated to gaming so there are opportunities to target and opportunities to reach your audience there as well um so as i said really well known for being highly engaged passionate clusters as well um of specifically gaming um as included in that low cpm costs so really cost effective um so you can reach your audience for cheaper on reddit um and you know as well it blends quite in it blends well in with with conversations and posts on reddit so it's it kind of, you can sort of blend in a little bit more in that sense. Um, but saying that it is quite a, it's a channel that has kind of holds the ad block kind of generation in that sense. So there is a little bit of negative user perception in terms of ads through Reddit. So you just have to be careful about how you're using it and how you're approaching it. And there is obviously a limited reach in terms of comparing it to Facebook or display, for example. Um, it is difficult to scale, but it's good to, to reach those niche audiences. Um, and then the, the targeting options are still relatively um, relatively limited. You can do community targeting, so you can, you can target specific subreddits. 
um, which is really good if if they exist and if if you can target them. Um, but they're slowly introducing stuff like engagement audiences, which means you can retarget based on video views and things, which is also a plus. Um, so it's definitely a channel that we see included a lot more in terms of paid activity. Um, and speaking of, of sort of up and coming or, or, or not up and coming, but increasingly popular channels is, is obviously TikTok. We get approached a lot more with, with, with studios wanting to sort of test the waters with TikTok advertising. With over a billion active users, you know it's it's difficult to not to not have something on there and not to get some engagement on there. It's just using it in the right way. Um, so looking, as I said, massively highly engaged user base. So an average, you know, an average user spends around about fifty-two minutes per day, so nearly an hour a day on the app, which allows you for you know advertising possibilities, obviously within your within your product. Um, massive growth still rising. Um, obviously, you know, engaged in growth. That's all. That's all you need really to to reach your audience. And then also the opportunity for user generated content. So users get really creative on on this platform. So you can kind of take advantage of them being creative and generating content for you, um, as well as putting your own content out there. Maybe people stitching it or creating content from your game and then putting it on on TikTok as well with it. A hashtag or something like that is is really popular on the channel. Um, so some cons, what just one ad placement. So it's you know it's just full screen ads. So it's some see it as a con, but it's obviously a full screen ad that can that can have maximum exposure. Um, and then there's potential brand safety concerns as well. So obviously, where they're starting to get banned in like India or even in the US and in, in the state of Montana, for example, you've got specific you know specific governments clamping down on, on the app itself so there are potential brand safety concerns there um not that we've really had too much brought up in terms of advertising that we run before but it's something to take note of and um and lastly sort of as with maybe a little bit of twitter it's pure it's probably purely a mobile focused channel so Awareness and community building will be will be good for when when factoring in in your media plan. Um, but then when you're looking at like a launch beat, for example, if budget is smaller, then direct marketing from mobile to Steam wish lists or anything like that might not perform as well. So you get to reach people for for, for cheaper, for for a good engagement and and everything like that. But when it comes to direct marketing in terms of direct to Steam wish list, direct to to buying your product it's not necessarily something to invest to invest marketing in then on the similar lines um we have snapchat which is still a, a, a sort of growing category in terms of gaming and a growth opportunity for gaming companies um looking at this obviously there's a younger demographic so again this is why it's so important to look at what your target audience is and look at what segments your audience are and, and, and get detail on that because you know, if, if you were between, if you did want to target audiences, obviously, between, but in that younger demographic, then you would want to choose Snapchat as an as a advertising channel as well to gain awareness and gain traction. Um, and then looking at like brand safety compared to like something like TikTok, it's quite a brand safe channel um, with not too much sort of bad content to, to put your, your ads sort of next to. Um, you have as well the opportunity for sequential storytelling. So if you have maybe like a developer update or videos that, that are needed to put in, in, in sequence to make sense, then you can serve that in order to your to your audience, which is a really good way of, of telling a story and to building, building audiences as well. Um, a few cons as well. Relatively limited targeting options. It has improved, but it's relatively limited in terms of like interest and in-market audiences. Um, you have hashtag targeting and stuff as well, but uh, you have you have interesting targeting as well, but it's not too scalable in that sense. Um, limited analytics as well. Um, it, it, it's good, you know, it doesn't quite compare to other channels, but it still has a little bit of insight that you can compare, um, but it's not something to, to, to run an ad channel based on that. Um, and as well, like TikTok talk and Twitter, it's it's same in terms of limit, limited relevance to actual direct marketing in terms of PC gamers in particular. Um, 
looking at that search advertising, I don't know how many of you think about search ads, like pay-per-click on Google search, Bing search, whatever, it, whatever the, the search engine, um, you know, gaming related searches have grown 70%, 75% year on year. Um, obviously mobile is the fastest growing segment, but still um, PC gaming have grown 35% year on year. So there are people are searching gaming terms on, on Google. So why not try and target that and try and try and try and capture those audiences and, and into a bucket from Google search. Um, some pros and cons as well with this, as I said, you can reach people with intent marketing. So people are actively searching specific genres, actively searching your competitor or similar games. You can then jump on that bit to be able to serve at the top of the search um, search page on Google, for example, and, and hoover up those audiences, basically. Um, so they're actively searching for something like your product. So it makes sense to kind of speak to them. Um, this is obviously where the keyword research and the audience audience work at the beginning comes in really handy. Um, measurable results, direct marketing, you know, with search, highly desktop focused channel as well. So you can get straight to click through on, 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 you know, look at Google Analytics data, GA data with, you know, with their integration, obviously with their search platform. Um, a lot of reporting and a lot of analytics, a lot of insight you can gain interesting top of bid reports and com competition ratings and who else is targeting and things like that you can get a good insight with this channel um some 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 cons um with all that being said there is a high competition on search um which can drive costs up if you're if a lot of companies are bidding on the same keyword um it can drive costs up so you've got to kind of ready to nail specific keywords that aren't too competitive um, and obviously there's a limited creative opportunity. So within, within gaming, obviously we want to showcase, um, we want to showcase all kinds of, you know, creative and trailers with that. So it's, uh, it's quite limited in that sense. And, you know, you, de you, you, you depend on, on specific search or algorithms in this sense. So it's a lot to keep on top of. Um, YouTube, um, I'm going to go a bit quickly through these because I know that time's getting on a little bit. Um, so massive, large engaged audiences, um, it's one of the highest, obviously platforms for gamers. It's, I think it's one of the, the, the biggest search engines even. Um, so it's something to be, to, to, to keep in mind there. Um, so you can do keyword targeting, placement targeting on specific channels as well. So specific YouTube channels you can, you can target, um, and, and be on, on, if you have like an influencer you're interested in, you can target their channel. Um, so it's a strong awareness channel for for a web, for a, for visibility. Um, skippable ads obviously is 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 a negative because people can just skip your ads or get a bit annoyed by having your ads either in stream or before they start their content. Um, as well as high competition like search, that's also a, a factor. Um, and placement of ads, unless you're using placement targeting, it um, you don't have full control over the content you're you're placing your ads on, so it can be quite um, you know, quite risky sometimes. Then looking at programmatic display, um, this is something that we that we work a lot with as well, because you can buy third party data, for example, like people that have purchased a Nintendo Switch, you can get data from credit card companies of, of people that have bought specific items. So like it can get really deep in terms of your targeting options. Um, and for people that have purchased through Steam, for example, you can you can you can get that data. Uh, you just pay through CPM costs, um, as well as like AI contextual targeting. So you can look at specific keywords on um, on uh, specific keywords on on the on the on the internet to be able to know what what to target content on. Um, massive flexibility in terms of ad creative. Um, you know. You can do 3D ads, HTML5 ads, animated banners, and even countdowns on 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 your on your ads as well. Um, you can some some cons. You can you there's there's quite a bit of ad fraud involved. Um, so that's quite common amongst sort of display advertising. You get click farms and things like that. So you need ad fraud tools to be included, um, as well as ad blindness. People use ad blockers and things like that nowadays. It's 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 more you know it's more common and as well as ad placement control like programmatic as well 
means you don't have an exact control over the content you're you're serving ads on. Um, so it's something to, to be aware of. And then on a similar line, um, direct buys work with, as I said at the beginning, directly with publish, uh, you know, websites and publishers to buy specific inventory on for like full page takeovers um, or like um, full page takeovers or specific, you know, ad, ad placements as well. Um, and uh, yes, sorry, I'm just seeing a question. I, I think there will be, um, we will send over the, the, the presentation file for sure um, afterwards. Um, I don't know if it's possible to do right now, but um, I'll, 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 uh, I'll definitely make sure that this gets sent over at the end. Um, and yeah, direct buys. So you get more control over the ad placements, literally if you want to, want to buy ad, ads on, on PC Gamer, for example, you can, or IGN, you can literally just say, okay, I want to spend 2,000, 2,000, whatever euros on, on ads for this specific day, then you can lock that in. Um, brand safety, you can, you can definitely, you can, you can basically, um, you know, guarantee that you're in a brand safe environment. And as well, you can negotiate pricing. So as an agency, we can negotiate agency rates with specific websites to get lower rates in terms of CPMs for, for, for as, as we work a lot with them. So that's something to, to be considered as well. And then um, relatively sort of limited reach in terms of comparing it to, to programmatic um, because you're, you know, you're limiting the ad placements available. Um, and as well, it's very time consuming because you need to reach out individually to to um, to site publishers to negotiate and they're not always really the, the quickest um you know the quickest they are getting back to you um and it's it, it's fixed pricing which some people might think is is a good thing but it doesn't really necessarily allow you to optimize based on 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 placements if you're you know your fixed price with a with a, with a publisher uh nearly nearly there's only a couple more left on this one and then we'll go through some some bits at the end as well um so twitch Advertising, you can obviously put, put ads and banner ads and um, you know video ads on on Twitch as a channel. Um, so this is obviously a massive channel for for, for gaming. Um, it's a massively engaged audience um, that, that spends a lot of time on the platform, and you get some good creative flexibility in terms of the format. So you can do takeovers, you can do banners and videos in stream and things like that. Um, so you can really get your your point across. And as well, it's got flexible pricing on it. To you know, to, to optimize and scale. Um, obviously, there's ad blocking that's involved um, in software that, that, that's an issue, and as well, there's high high saturation with ads that you need to be kind of creative to cut through the noise. Um, we find that limited target options are you know is is a, is is an issue with specifics like interests and stuff not an option, but you can target on like similar games and dem demographics, which we tend to see is is enough if you're doing like a larger release. And then looking at influencer marketing, we also obviously run, run into a lot of influencer campaigns. Um, so we can see there's a lot of trust in influencers and it's obviously something to keep in mind for, for your marketing plan because I know that sort of, you know, investors will be looking at how you're going to get that audience and engagement. Um, so as I said, it taps into the creator's trust and loyalty. Um, so it becomes a kind of beacon of truth to, to their followers, um, which is which is sort of invaluable in that sense. It's not just you saying the message, it's someone else. Um, and you can tap into their niche communities. So especially within gaming, there's so many niche communities involved. That's something that's really useful. And as as you know as well, influencers they can provide valuable content. So you can use reuse this content. It's 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 content that's out there. If it's on you know YouTube, for example, if it's video on demand, it's always going to be out there for people to discover. Um, because at the end of the day, content is is king, and you want as much good quality content out there for your game. Um, it can be expensive when when putting campaigns together. Some some creators are just outrageously expensive, and and they know that they can probably charge that. Um, but it's kind of you know you've got to you've got to sort of go with the sort of if you've got a limited budget, the, the sort of micro influencers are, are a bit more achievable. Um, you've got a bit of a lack of control. Same, the, the, the two last ones are kind of similar to, to each other where there's a lack of control within 
what your influencer does in the future that could harm your brand or harm your, you know, based on the, their behavior in the, in the future. So it's something to, to keep in mind. But I wouldn't say as a, as a too much of a con to, to not run. Um, so now you're kind of aware of the different channels and things like that. Um, we had a little bit of a whistle stop tour around paid media channels and things like that. I hope it, I hope it wasn't too long, but I'm aware that I had to fit a lot of information in. Um, so there's a, a few more things to go in terms of best practices and um, things like that, and and some benchmarks as well that that might be interesting for for, for you guys to 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 hear. Um, so yeah, in our experience, we've run a lot of campaigns. We've run a lot of of, of things of, of campaigns for for games and, and things. So we we've got a good set of of, of some best practices. Um, so campaign geo. So we're asked a lot, like we were approached a lot with studios that don't really know where to target their campaigns or where to where to go because with a limited budget, you've got to be kind of clever on where where you're targeting so you don't spread yourself too thin. Um, so we've got to show exactly where we're targeting and what, what we want to what what markets we want to hit. So there are different ways of determining this. Obviously, there's an overall landscape of gaming. Um, so we've obviously taken on. Um, we obviously taken on on um, you know great reg data on terms of revenue and, and and very basic information that we've given and, and it gives us a bit of a guide in terms of where the revenue is at least. Um, Peter, sorry, just uh, thanks for your thanks for your question. Um, I'll, I'll 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 answer that now because um, while it's in my uh, while it's in my head. Um, so Peter asks, what's your opinion on on running ads before speaking to investors or, or, or publishers? Um, is it a waste of money or is the extra visibility um, that you can mention during pitching or is it a waste of money if your budget's low? That's a good question. And I, you know, in our experience, it's good to have a small amount of, of, of ads running before, but for a different objective. So I think your objective before approaching investors and publishers is to build a community, build engagement. So I'd say running ads in terms of on an engagement, so boosting posts for the objective of you know likes, comments, followers, and things like that. We wouldn't normally recommend this with a you know on launch, but before you approach investors and publishers, it's good to show that you've got interest in your brand. So having ads running, it doesn't have to be a large amount, like ten dollars, ten euros, twenty euros here and there of boosting posts, creating engagement and, and letting someone like Facebook, Twitter know that that your that your game or your your account is is generating engagement. It's it's a really good way of social proofing your your game. So I we definitely would recommend running some stuff, but and it doesn't have to be a lot. It just shows that there's some um you know there's some interest. So I hope that answers your question. Um, <laughs> but feel free to reach out to me afterwards as well if you wanted to, to have a, a deeper chat about that. Um, so the yeah back on to, to campaign geos um the, the the other thing we can do is is what i what i recently um mentioned as well before is is looking on facebook um looking on facebook uh to look at what the the size of the audience is so as i said this is the, the other um the other example that, that i did is, is is the mmo genre on facebook targeting you plug that in and then as we've as we've pulled out here specific you know we, we've taken an idea of where the biggest or possibly biggest revenues are and then looked at what the audience size within um you know within these countries are so obviously we can see that um us is, has a massive audience for mmos and and things like that and you know obviously germany's smaller or, or whatever so we can you can obviously get niche with that and look at, at more niche but we wanted to use an example that kind of had had larger audiences, but this kind of helps you determine what audiences are big enough to target as well on through something like 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 Facebook. Um, you can dive into your current player data as well. So you know, Google GA for example. Um, if you've linked that with your Steam page or your um or your your landing page, then then you can look at where your audience are coming from, and then just basically just use that data, which is probably the most common. And then, as I said before, like if you've got a Exola publisher account you can you look at where your existing purchases or existing audiences um or team data suite as i said before offer the same the same service and um 
Steamworks will be adding geo measurement. I'm sure you all get the email um, that go, goes into detail in that. So they will be adding geo, more, more sort of flexible geo target uh, analytics um, as well. So that, that as GA support is going to be taken down, um, then Steamworks are kind of offering their own solution to that. Um, campaign duration, another, another top question we get is how long should your campaigns last for? When do we start? When, what, what, like, what's the best practices here? So hopefully this answers a few questions, but as I said, get in contact with me afterwards if you need more specific questions, because it's always dependent on, you know, a lot of different factors. So we can have a, a detailed contact one-on-one -on -one if needed. Um, a few, a few key points that we've that we've noticed with our with our campaigns and that we've seen before um this is just a bit of a screen grab from a media plan um that shows you know specific beats as well as specific timings as well as is what we show um when we present the media plan um so don't normally start paid campaigns before six months of launch as a caveat unless you're you're building a uh, you're wanting to get some social proofing um like uh, Peter asked before, um, it's 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 it can be done with boosting, but if you're looking at paid campaigns with a you know wish list or or whatever or, or a CTA or an email sign up, then you don't want to exhaust your audience with paid activity when there's nothing to take action on or look forward to. Um, you want to run a campaign for maybe at least two weeks just to get enough data for you know to analyze and to make optimization decisions. And um, and everything like that. So um, yeah, that that that's probably a key aspect as well because you can't really just run a campaign for a couple of days and and leave it. You want to optimize. And then for each ad ad, uh, ad set, for example, you want to run at least twenty dollars or twenty euros a day on um, on that ad set to get sufficient learnings within that time and optimize. So that can kind of stead you in good stead for for figuring out budgets and things and allow some activity as well. For example. On a launch, I think we've yeah we've 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 shown here that there's a slow phasing up and then some large activity before launch day because we want to show if we're you know obviously running towards Steam, then we want to show that that Steam right up to his launch is 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 um, that there's a good traffic and there's good interest in this game, which will then automatically give organic reach and organic um, you know or, or, organic reach to to that game on build up to launch. So you want to basically work the system in that way. Then looking on budgets, um, I hope, sorry, I know it's, we've reached the hour mark, I think. Um, and yeah, I hope this is useful enough to stay on, but as I say, if you've got other places to be, I completely understand and we can um, send this afterwards. Um, the the golden question normally is, is how much should I spend? Um, you know, we need to think about it. There's not the exact science to it, but we need there are ways of, of, of recommending this and, and choosing how much to spend. So you want to define your goals. What do you want to achieve? How many wish lists? How much traffic? You know, what how many people do you want to reach? There's ways of of, of measuring this and, and costing this up. Um also data gathering, as I said before, you want to spend at least 20 euros or 20 dollars a day on an ad set. Um to generate generate data to generate learnings so that can kind of that can kind of you can work up from that um and as well as channels like how many channels you want to run um you can spend a small you can spend a large amount on one channel or a small amount on a few channels you can kind of go from that way in terms of where your audience is and you don't want to you know you don't want to create ad fatigue so when we're looking at this the general general principle is anything between like five and 20 uh, in terms of ad frequency. So you don't want some one person to see the ad more than, for example, 20 times or maybe even 10 times if you're being safe. So you want to basically map out how big the audiences are on each channel and then look at how much you want to spend on that channel based on that percentage of spend, for example. Um, then again, social proving, like I, I mentioned before, um, exception to, to some of these rules is if you want to do social proofing, which is basically, as I said before, like pushing or sponsoring some posts with the objective of creating engagement, creating comments and things like that. So then you can prove to investors that you're 
game is engaged with, even if you're, it's a workaround of the system, you're paying for those impressions, you're, you're paying for those engagements. People are still engaging and people are still, you know, people are still, with organic reach is basically at, a, at an all time low in terms of if you just put something out without paid media behind it, it's going to reach even the people that follow you, it's going to reach maybe like 10, 20, 20 at the most percent of that. So you're going to want to push out paid activity beforehand and little bits, $10 here and there to, to, to actually get engagement and to prove that people are engaging. Um, this is quite an, a, a key sort of slide in terms of planning. It's, as I say, again, not an exact science, but it's a good way of working out roughly what kind of budget you're looking at. Um, we want to basically turn the funnel upside down and think of how many wish lists do you want to achieve. Um, so, for example, if you want 50, 50K wish lists, it seems to be a, a good benchmark. Obviously, a, that's, a, that's a, it's a large amount. It's a high, as, but it's kind of easy to map out in terms of this calculation. So let's just go with that. Um, generally speaking, if there's a 10% conversion rate from clicks to wish lists, then you're wanting to generate 500,000 clicks. And then obviously, if you're looking then, we know specific cost per clicks and cost per thousand people reached. Then if you're looking at around about 25, 25 cents cost per click or 2% click through rate, for example, then you're looking at around about 25 million impressions. And then if we know what, you know, we know exactly what average sort of CPM costs, which is around about $5 maybe, depending on platforms, then you're looking obviously at a spend of 125K. Don't panic. Um, realistically, this isn't like a, you're not going to spend this much because you're going to get wish this organically. You're going to get organic reach from Steam and stuff. So this isn't, you know, as I say, not an exact science. You're not going to need to spend 125K for 50K wish lists. Um, this is just a, an interesting way of mapping it out to see, you know, maybe you can assign a specific percentage of organic wish lists and take that off spend as well. Um, that's something to keep in mind as well. So that 125K is just for the purpose of working it out. It needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Um, so then benchmarks, um, we have, yeah, we have a couple slides on benchmarks and a couple slides on tracking, and then, then I can uh, answer questions or, or, or leave you be. Um, so benchmarks, roughly looking like, you know, wanting to have a roundabout if you're looking at 7,000 wish lists um, before release, then you actually kind of get a more likely chance of getting on the popular upcoming list. Um, and you get some good organic reach upon launch, for example. So if your budget isn't looking at tens of thousands of wish lists, then this is a good way to go in terms of getting a good amount of wish lists up to Steam um, and showcasing the game organically. So a good way you can test you can test where you are in the popular upcoming sort of way of, of working is going to Steam database or Steam DB, searching for your game and then looking um, looking at the charts tab. And there's a little store data widget that tells you what number you are in the, in the charts. And if you're if you have a number, then you you are likely to come up in the popular upcoming. But if you are, you know, the lower the number or the the, the lower your ranking in terms of the higher you rank, if that makes sense, then then you are more likely to to to, to stay on for longer and stay on for you know the top for for a longer amount of time. So it's something to worth. Keep, keep checking and then, then you know you're in good stead. But obviously it depends as well on similar games that are getting released at the same time and things like that. Um, Peter, so I've got another question. Thank you for, for, for sending over a question. Um, you ask, is it recommended to create a social media account for each project or game? Was it better to run as a studio? Now this is an interesting question um, because we've seen both and <laughs> We tend to, it, 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 honestly, it depends if your audience is similar for, for each game. Like if, if, if you have a, a, a studio that creates similar games that audiences will be interested in, then it makes sense to run it from a studio point of view. Um, and if you want to build up a brand, then obviously as a studio, then we've seen that. We've seen that happen. I think more often than not with studios, they want to build a brand, they want to build you know, name for themselves in that sense. So it is a case of having a social media account for the studio and 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 pushing out 
you know content to to your studio fans essentially and and then direct them to a specific store page on, on steam um so that's i mean we we there's no recommendation in terms of for our side in terms of it's more a case of what what you want to do if you want to create a a, a a longevity in terms of your fans for your studio then yeah you, you run all the ads from your main studio studio um ad accounts um and then obviously like you know obviously make it clear what game it is and, and, and target that specific target audience but just be aware that you're going to build you don't want to mix too many audiences so it's just something to keep uh, keep in mind of um we have seen it as well where specific games have specific ad accounts it's just um yeah, it's just it's just obviously more more admin. It's a little bit more in terms of you're you're building a you're building a fan base for the game rather than for the for the studio. So it's it's what you prefer. Um. So yeah, next so next slide in terms of the benchmarks. Um. Again, very very benchmarks used in the in the in the in the you know, in, in, in its complete sense here, but which this conversion rates you can expect, you know, it might have gotten a little bit lower now with, with certain updates on Steam, but um, you can expect around about this, maybe around about sort of 10 to 20 now, depending on what how many wish lists you have um, in terms of the conversion there. Um, as well as sort of looking at daily wish lists, if you're looking around about 20 wish lists a day for an indie Steam uh, indie game, that's kind of a positive, uh, depending on how, like for example, a year you're going to reach down about seven thousand wish lists. So, like, you know, it builds up gradually. So you want to make sure that that, that it's got a steady, steady um, momentum. So, media plan. I don't think we're going to have time to go through the media plan. There's a screenshot here, and in the in after the last after after this presentation, you're going to be sent a link to this media plan on on this slide. So. Click through, have a, have a little look around. It pretty much just is a media plan that we provide that outlines different beats, outlines the channels, the dates, the budgets, and things like that. Like it's it's, it's self-explanatory. So I'm not going to kind of go through it now just to save a bit of time. But there's a screenshot from it. And it, in each tab, it goes through different estimates, estimates, estimations of CPMs, cost per clicks, <clears throat> cost per views, and things like that. So it gives a bit of benchmark data as well. So Hopefully you find that interesting. And yeah, this is what we kind of recommend to give to investors to show exactly where your budget's going, what you're expected to get from it and what timings are as well. It's, it's very black and white in terms of what your plan is. And lastly, I want to just talk about measurement. Um, I appreciate all you, all you, all you staying on um, and, and listening to this. I hope it's been useful. Um, and so, yeah, finally, we obviously want to show investors or publishers that like investors in particular that, that are, are, are putting money in, even if it's like a VC, for example, we want to show them how we're going to measure activity, um, how we're going to track everything. And, um, you know, we don't want to just, we don't want to just throw money in, into a campaign and not, not know how it's done. Um, Alexandra, thank you for your question. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that now, seeing as this is a good sort of um, good good midpoint. Um, which ad platform do you think works best for Kickstarter? Are there any benchmarks about sort of typical pre Kickstarter ads, for example? Um, this is a good, uh, also a good question, and we have run a few Kickstarter campaigns that that have done well on on like specific channels, like. For example, Facebook, there's a good integration on, on Kickstarter in terms of like attribution and, and, and optimizations for Kickstarters, um, as well as I think mostly like a Kickstarter audience is going to be like, it's going to be on the main social media. So obviously like Twitter and Facebook, they're highly engaged. They're kind of, there's a good, there's a good audience base there. So like for though, for Kickstarter campaigns in particular, we've seen Facebook is the main driver for that, for example. Um, Facebook and Instagram are, are quite creative channels for, for a Kickstarter. They have, you know, obviously retargeting based on the, the pixel you can implement on a, on a Kickstarter page, um, as well as, as well as if you've got a good, a, a good YouTube channel, a YouTube video, you can put it on there to, to, to get good, good exposure. Um, 
So I think more the social channels for Kickstarters, like display ads, <laughs> probably you can't really communicate enough of the messaging. So you want to be able to communicate that a, a lot of messaging. And that's well, not a lot of messaging, but you want to communicate your, your product in the best way possible. So like social channels essentially is, is, is the way to go there. Um, benchmarks about pre-Kickstarter ads. Um, I mean, I, I don't have that to hand. I could probably look at, look and see if I can provide you with that after this. Um, so I have to, this obviously quite specific. So I can, I can check our, our previous data and, and, and see if I can give you any benchmarks after this. Um, but yeah, I appreciate your question and um, yeah, get in contact afterwards and, and I can get you some more details on that because um, I'm sure we'll have something. Um, so back on to, 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 to measurement, um, again, tracking is, is vitally important and um, essential to show you know, investors that you know exactly about how you're tra tracking. Um, so I'll go through three main avenues of tracking and measuring your marketing um, because you want to optimize campaigns, you want to improve your return on investment and you want to make those data driven decisions. So measurement number one is Steamworks UTM links. Um, as I've mentioned before, um, this obviously is, is, is early stages and it's getting a big update coming soon in uh, the next couple of months so basically adding tracking parameters to your landing to your to your to your ad links um like in the example below you can have you know for example like content audience sources like facebook you can see and then it plugs that back into steam as well so there is the solution to to, to look at what's Converting in terms of wish lists and 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 uh, and and installs, for example, early access installs, for example, purchases. Um, so you can see exactly what traffic is coming from and what's converting. Um, it's not perfect. There's a lot of tracks tracked visits that drop off. Um, so it, it's not it's not as good as, as some other options, but it's obviously like it's being improved on. There's 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 certain aspects seeing as now GA is being um, excluded or fa phased out of Steamworks tracking or Steam tracking, then this is probably going to be, they're facing it to this is the main option. So um, something to get familiar with. Um, and yeah, it gives an indication of, of what how well your, your traffic is performing and where. Um, some also some, some uh, interesting points is, is it's a landing page. So if you have a landing page or studio page or something like that that's highly engaging you can obviously put some some code in so facebook pixel google pixel you can you can put that on to, to capture your audiences um so you have full flexibility of, of data gathering there um you can send postbacks to ad channels so you can tell facebook basically this person has purchased or or clicked to steam so you capture that audience and then you can retarget them through um when it comes to launch um, you could retarget website visitors um and so it's really good to, to prove to investors for example that you know you know you can capture your audience and you can you can retarget them later so it's really important um it does add another step in the funnel so if you're selling on steam or the store pages obviously like you go from ads click to steam from ad click to steam to ad click to website to Steam or store page, whatever the store page is. So there are tools like sort of sort of payment platform that means you can actually sell from your website. But if you want to capture the audience on Steam, then obviously it's you know it's something to consider. And then lastly, um, external tools. I've, I've said before, Steam Data Suite. We we've actually partnered with them, so we we get a full access to their tracking and 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 and, and product suite, which is. Which is great. Um, we wouldn't have partnered with them if, if we didn't think it was worth doing for our marketing. Um, as well as GameSite, which offers pretty much a similar, um, a similar, a similar product stack uh, by implementing small code into, into your sort of game launch or your game that, that that allows you to capture fingerprint data from ads to to game launch, um, which is the most transparent and useful data you can get, um, and also creates postbacks to Facebook. So a postback essentially is if a user clicks on an ad and then goes through the funnel to then Steam or, or console and then 
downloads the game and then launches the game. As soon as that game is launched, that fingerprint of the user that is that was captured on ad click through a through a, a unique link, then is sent back to Facebook um, or, or Google, for example, and then it, it captures the data of that person. It's all obviously above board and and, and completely data friendly and safe, um, but it just allows platforms like Facebook and Google to understand your audience more and 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 optimize towards similar people. So conclusion. Um, I appreciate you all staying on and and uh, and listening and engaging and um, hopefully taking stuff away that's useful. Um, so obviously, I you know wanted to highlight a few of the takeaways on this, and it's because I'm aware it's there's there's a lot of information we've covered. Um, so obviously, number one, kind of the most important step is demonstrating how how you know your audience and demonstrating to investors how you can find them. So this is really important because it, it, it shapes the rest of your plan. It shapes the rest of your activity to know who you're targeting and where you're going to find them and what maybe what tools and tactics you're going to use. Um, on that, utilize these tools, spy on competitors, look at the wider market and, and, and utilize these things. There's a lot of free tools out there to use as well as paid tools, but you can still get by on the free tools that are available. Um, think about objectives first to, um, you know what what to, to 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 match what channels and and you basically choose your channels based on audiences and objectives so this is a really um really useful step in 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 the funnel of making your 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 deck and your 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 plan um as well as remembering to capture your own data don't forget how valuable your your own data is even if it's on a landing page in the build up to launch like email lists um the, audiences on Facebook like remember to start capturing this as soon as possible even if it's not <clears throat> a lot to begin with it will all build up and it'll all, it'll all be valuable in the long run and um yeah show that, that that you've thought about your potential results so media plan obviously is important in that case to show what you're expecting and also like show that you're not just putting your finger in the air and hoping that you're going to get results like show that you're using these tools Show that you've or show that you've even thought about using these tools and show like you're really serious about scaling the game. You don't just want to put it out there and hope for the best. You have tracking in place or you have an idea of what, how you're going to measure. Because that's 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 you know, we work a lot with VCs and investment companies, and obviously they know they want they want to see how how you're gonna scale and how you're gonna grow. And yeah, so now I will leave you, I will leave you to, I mean, if you've got questions, if you if you've, if you've stayed on, then I appreciate that. And if you've got questions, I'm happy to answer. But um, I've, as I said before, last slide, I've listed out all the tools um, that I've mentioned in this. So you can have a little play, have a little look around. I've included my, de uh, my details, all the team's details. You can reach out to us through our website or through this as well. Yeah. And, um, and finally, we're happy to, to have a look at your game have a look at creating a media plan for you to then put forward to investors. Um, it's in, you know, it's in our interest to, to get you the funding that, that you kind of deserve and that you, that you, that you look for. So, you know, reach out. We're happy to have a look and uh, yeah, I appreciate you jumping on this and, and listening and um, yeah, I hope you, uh, hope you found something interesting and uh, I, Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, it was quite. Uh, it was very interesting, actually. A lot of a lot of content, as you as you said, uh, a lot of details on on many platforms. But uh, but uh, but I found it really interesting. Um, I do have a couple of questions that I want to I want to ask you myself. So uh, I'll jump into it. Uh, if you guys, uh, if uh, any people. Uh, spectators want to use that opportunity to ask additional question it's uh, the best time um, just for information we will be sending uh, the presentation uh, um, next presentation uh, later today uh, as well as an inquiry on uh, the quality of the of the master class uh, please do fill in those inquiries they help us a lot uh, improve uh, for the future 
Um, so yeah, uh, first thing, Nick, is uh, you uh, wh when you are going through all the different platforms that you can use uh, for your uh, for your marketing, uh, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, Twitch, uh, uh, Instagram, and so on. Um, you didn't mention uh, that creating creative formats was a good was a good way to differentiate. Um, do, do you have a, like an example of an especially creative campaign that you that you ran or helped uh, helped run? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, that's a good question. We, so we have, yeah, we, we've run a lot of, we've done a lot of creative uh, campaigns. Like we, we, we offer creative work in our studio. So, I'm with, so with, I think I would highlight in particular that display like programmatic, for example, that have, that have the ability to create like animated ads and even countdown ads. So for some, for, for a campaign that we did for um, CI games, we did a sale for them. Um, we looked at creating like a countdown ad within the within within a banner ad. So, for example, you have a website, you have like a, a leaderboard ad, for example, or a skyscraper ad on the side, and it's um, it's a dynamic ad. So it shows a countdown. So maybe like three days left, two days left, whatever, whatever, how many days it was. It automatically changed. Um, you know, it automatically counted down once the ads were shown to the relevant people. So. That was an interesting way of, of of sort of inspiring a little bit of of um, you know a little bit of um, I don't know why, uh, my mind's gone blank a little bit, but like it, it, it inspired like it, it showed a little bit of countdown and it showed a bit of like um, urgency. That's the word. <laughs> it, it inspired a little of urgency within the campaign to like people to click on the ad and say, "Oh, there's only like four hours left, or whatever, or a day left. Like, let's click on it." So. That was interesting and then yeah well, there's, there's a lot of different creative ideas that, that can be used like um carousels a, a good option on facebook for example that we've run for um we did a big campaign for soul worker for for game forge that included the different characters that that kind of bled into a one carousel um that was interesting um but yeah it's 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 all about as you say cutting through the noise with these channels yeah, and uh, speaking of that, uh, you 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 also did mention that uh, it was uh, important to know your audience and uh, choose the best platform uh, for your audience. Uh, that being said, uh, since uh, I think that we have a lot of uh, people watching that uh, are indie developers and uh, want to target uh, PC gamers, uh, what would be your go-to three, uh, four platforms uh, uh, in that case? Okay, interesting. Yeah, for for, for PC gamers in particular. Indie indie PC gamers, yeah. Indie indie PC gamers. Um, so three top three for desktop, uh, in or PC. So indie indie PC. I mean, Facebook, I'd say, or Meta is a good platform for that because first of all, it has, you know, it has desktop inventory, it has desktop users, but as well, it's got a really wide targeting, you know, criteria. You can target indie gamers as a, as an option. Uh, and as well, cross you can add to that PC gamers if you wanted to. So you can target PC gamers, but that that are only interested in the indie games, um, which is really good option. But you can also sort of create lookalikes and things. So using your first party data, I'd say still use Facebook. Um, Reddit's also obviously a big channel for that, but I would put less budget in there because it's not as scalable. But there are communities around indie games, like indie game swap and indie games, indie gamers, for example. So there's it is worth being on there, but don't don't use that as a main channel. Um, and I'd say to be honest, I'd say YouTube is probably or YouTube is probably a, a one of the main one of the main channels in that sense. Um, or YouTube and YouTube and, and influencer campaigns, but YouTube purely because of the fact of the audience targeting you can target specific keywords you can target indie gaming channels you can target you know specific youtube uh, or specific influencer channels um as well as get your game visually in front of people that are specifically in, in into indie games and in pc as well on, on desktop so i'd say that and then obviously like influencer campaigns um you know that, that that that's always good for for an indie game because there's such a passionate indie game audience that follow these and engage with these creators. So that's also something that, that that's recommended. All right. Um, and uh, what what? 
so you kind of you kind of talked about it a little bit but what what budget would you uh, should you allocate to your media plan uh, and your especially especially your uh, ad plan uh, compared to your production budget uh, and also you did uh, show at some point that uh, you could expect a 50k wish list from 125k uh, uh, euros or dollars don't remember uh, which would mean like a 2.5 uh, euro per wish list uh, is that like a standard number for the industry or is that something that you just uh, noticed uh, on your campaigns? Um, so in answer to, 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 your, to your last question, that's kind of it. As I said, it's to be taken with a little bit of a pinch of salt because you're going to get organic wish lists on top of that. So like when you're looking at 50K wish lists, you're not going to pay for them all essentially. So depending on what, like, on how well your game does in terms of how well it's received, like, it can get lower than, than that. Um, we have seen, we've seen higher costs for games that didn't perform well, and we've seen lower costs. Like, the, the, the wish lists you gain, the more tactical you think in terms of the timings and the, the way that you run in terms of getting organic um, exposure on Steam, the, the more, obviously, organic wish lists you're going to get. So it can be seen as a rough average but you can get lower if you if you if you're getting more organic exposure as well so it's about timing your beats in the right in the right moments where for example just before launch or just you know before or just around about a, a show where you see an increased amount of traffic um so that's something to, to keep in mind um and your first question sorry can you remind me of your first question <laughs> Yeah, sure thing. Um, about the the amount of uh, of money you should dedicate to uh, your uh, marketing plan and ad plan, uh, and especially how it relates to your production budget. Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, in terms of the amount of budget that you should allocate, then yeah, use those those tactics that I that I kind of showed on on those slides in terms of figuring out what what kind of wish lists, what what you want to achieve in terms of your wish list. Um, in terms of your in terms of relation to your production budget i haven't i don't think we've really um we i don't think we've given that recommendation before in terms of the percentage of it so i wouldn't be able to say as such at the moment but um i think it's more of a case of like looking yeah looking at the size of the audience looking how you're gonna um how you're gonna reach them um we've seen budgets like we've seen budgets from you know from that for an indie studio we've seen budgets from like depending on each beat like a thousand euros a beat to like ten thousand um or even like twenty five thousand overall like you can you can get a good strategy if you just if you know exactly what beats and what times and dates you want to match your activity with to then optimize for the for that organic reach as well um so yeah it, it's kind of it, it ranges but we've seen sort of around about 10, 15 to 20,000 in terms of like the full strategy, but it can, it can go up and down from that. Uh, thanks. And, and we have a question from uh, Francesco uh, asking uh, if uh, whether creating a Discord community uh, around the game can be a valid method method to have an organic engagement. Uh, and I guess uh, it's a valid and efficient method. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, efficient is a good word. To to use as well because it can like it does no harm in creating a, a discord community like you know that it's a good way of getting that core your core audience engaged and, and updated with 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 what you're doing um it is a lot of a lot of management it is of uptake and it, it takes out a lot of time so it's very um yeah in terms of time efficiency and, and performance efficiency maybe you know it's good to have something but like when you're updating your audience, you will always put it on socials or, or out there as well anyway. So it, it, is an, it is a valid method, but you'll have organic engagement within Discord community. It might not necessarily translate as much to, you know, social activity and stuff like that, um, because people might move off from engaging on social media to Discord community. So when we want to entice engagement for socials like you want to you want to as i said before you want to show facebook or twitter or, or whatever or even youtube like you want to show those channels that your your game or your content is worth engaging with 
by doing that is the only way of doing that is is getting high engagement so if you're if you're distracting maybe people from these these other posts on on discord like when you're looking at organic engagement and boosting your your organic impressions then you know you don't want to distract you want to you want to add to their experience on socials you don't want to just post the same content on discord and socials because then you're you're distracting people from engaging publicly on 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 facebook for example and more engagement on facebook means higher reach you know more exposure organically and everything like that so it's something to keep in mind all right uh i have one last question for me so if uh, yep. anyone want to ask one question it's your your last chance as well uh, end the webinar after that um it, it's not my field and I, and my, I might i might be saying something uh, wrong uh so please correct me if i do but i i i, I did think i heard recently that steam was going to uh, open more uh uh, tools to game devs so that they could uh, understand better how their wish lists were coming from. Uh, do you have any information on that? Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, information, any insight uh, that you can share? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's um, that's based on the on the, the Steamworks UTM links. Um, so as I said, like at the moment, there is visibility on wish lists and 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 events within Steam using the UTM links. Um, and there is some, as I said, there's there's some visibility on that at the moment. We do use it, and we do see results coming through from it. As I said, it is very basic, and it's very there's a lot of drop off in terms of tracking. So there are it's not perfect. Um, so recently, Steam did announce that they are improving it. They're adding in, I think, geo um, geo data as well to those wish lists, so you can see exactly where they in the world they're coming from, as well as Probably, I assume, improving the drop-off rate so that people don't, you know, that the tech isn't as as buggy. Um, and as well, there's a big update that I think I mentioned that um, they're they're discontinuing or then then they they stop they're discontinuing Google Analytics integration with um, with your Steam page. So now, for example, you can integrate GA with with your Steam page and and have a look on GA at specific data in terms of you know that geo and audio activity on the site but because of ga4 integration coming in july um they're not continuing that so it will slowly be phased out um so essentially you'll have the, the same visibility that you did on ga but they're, they're transitioning that to their own platform on steamworks so the utm links will be even more important there so for example if you're running campaigns on facebook twitter reddit and you've, you've tagged them with your UTM links, um, then you'll be able to see on Steam exactly what what channels, what content is is generating the most wish lists. And then you can obviously create more of that content and optimize and, and push more of that best performing content on the best performing channel out there and focus on that, um, which is is valuable in, in marketing and valuable to show to investors what what, what worked well and creating more of that. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for for the insight. Um, all right, well, uh, we don't have any more questions, so I guess we'll uh, we'll be uh, we'll be done with this one. Um, thanks for your time, Nick. Thanks for all your uh, your uh, the wisdom you shared today. Uh, as I said, uh, we're going to share this uh, nice presentation that has a lot of info on various platforms, so I, I kind of understand why uh, people want uh, to get it. Um, and yeah, for all uh, participants, uh, it's probably my last uh, masterclass uh, as, with Game Made in Europe, I, as uh, my colleague Eva will be uh, will uh, take my place for the next one. So uh, it was great seeing you and, uh, <laughs> and see you around. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the opportunity to, to speak to you. And um, yeah, I really appreciate it. And yeah, get in touch if you need any any help. And it was great to, uh, great to speak to you. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye.